Okay, well, it's 635. Uh, we have four commissioners. Let's get started. Um, this is the special board of commissioner. Wow. This is the special board of commissioners meeting for Monday, October 19th, 2020, starting at 630 p.m. We're going to get started with the Pledge of Allegiance. As always, when we're on Zoom, I'm going to remind everyone, if you're at a fixed camera, you don't need to stand up. We don't need to see your pants. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. I'm also going to note for future that if everybody has their microphones on mute when we do the Pledge of Allegiance, it puts an awful lot of pressure on me to remember everything in order. So I think I got it right that time, but maybe next time you all chime in. Moving right along to public participation, I have nothing in the inbox, so I will remind everybody, um, if you wanna send an email to public at radner.org, we will read it at either the appropriate agenda item if it comes in during the meeting or just prior to the adjournment if you get to us before the end. Moving on to ordinance number 2020-19 adoption, authorizing the advance refunding of the general obligation bonds series 2012 and the aggregate principal amount not to exceed $18,175,000. Uh, I will for me is there a second. I see a peace sign from Sean, I'm gonna take that uh, as a second. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's a loud boom in your audio, Jack. In my, here? Yeah, yeah, it was like a, Big staticky. Was that just oh. me or is that everybody? I think we all heard it. Okay. All right. Oh. <laughs> well, you either heard it or you didn't. <laughs> um, I'll keep these on for the moment. If it reoccurs, then I'll swap them out. I've got a motion and a second. Um, Bill or Bob, do you want to read us in on these refunding bonds? Absolutely. I'm gonna I'm gonna let Mr. Tate run with this. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. President, Mr. White. Uh, this is the ordinance uh, for adoption tonight to refund the series 2012 bonds. Uh, this is an advance refunding um, in an amount that is listed not to exceed uh, just over $18 million. Um, the amount that actually will be refunded is yet to be determined. Uh, with us tonight, by the way, I'm sorry, I didn't introduce uh, Suzanne Mays with Cozen O'Connor bond council as well as uh, michael wolf uh, underwriter with benning and scattergood um, so we've been um we're at the we're at the point now we expect to have our rating from uh moody's in the next couple of days and we'll be in a position to go to sale uh shortly thereafter um any particulars on those any questions on those particulars I know Michael and or Suzanne would be happy to discuss any of the specifics about that, uh, but the ordinance itself um, is ready for adoption tonight. Um, as I said, it is an advanced refunding, so it is a taxable refunding um, in advance of the original call date of 2022. Is there any commissioner comment? Is there any staff comment? And if, I, if I may add one more, sorry, Mr. President. Um, this was advanced now, this, this was put forth now uh, so that Township would re realize savings over the remaining life of the, uh, the bonds, which is through 2037. Uh, aggregate savings in the, in the amount somewhere in the million, the $1.2 million range. And again, yet to be determined as, uh, as the bonds go to sell. Okay, thank you. Is there any additional staff comment? I have no public comment in the email inbox, so I will call the vote. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. Motion passes with commissioners, um, looks like Booker and Moira is both not present. Well, you know, um, Moira's gonna be late. She says you are aware she's gonna be late. Yes, thank you. Okay. Um, 
Moving on to item three, presentation of the 2021 Township Manager Recommended Budget. I will uh, kick that off. Um, first of all, I just I want to thank the commissioners for holding this meeting tonight on what would have otherwise been a night off. We appreciate you taking the time uh, to dedicate to um, allowing us to roll out this presentation. Uh, what we're hoping to do in the next uh, hour-ish is um, get through the, the 2021 budget presentation outlining the major assumptions and uh, projections on where we think uh, our general fund is going to land not only in 2021 but uh, where we're going to land in 2020 as well um, and then outline you know some of the decisions that will be needed between now and uh, budget adoption time uh, I think um, once we get into the numbers hopefully you'll agree that um, you know, it, it's certainly not as, um, is, is, is the picture is not as rosy as we'd normally like it to be, but I think there's decisions that have been made in the past that have set the township up to be well suited for this type of scenario. Uh, it's certainly not sustainable, but uh, at the same time, um, you know, our, our financial, um, you know, putting our finances first over the last, uh, you know, six, seven, eight, ten 10 years has proved to, to be very beneficial. Um, and I, I definitely wanna emphasize that the decision that the board had made the last two years uh, to adjust real estate taxes, I know those conversations weren't easy. I know uh, that's not always popular, but those decisions and the, the revenue generated from them uh, certainly put the township on a much stronger uh, financial footing than we would otherwise be uh, without, you know, it, that, that it, those tax increases generated about a million and a half of new revenue. Uh, without that, this, this conversation tonight would be very different. So uh, I want to recognize the board and, and those that supported those tax increases those years. Uh, it's really going to help the township uh, kind of weather this storm uh, and be able to continue to provide the services that the, the residents and stakeholders come to expect. Um, that being said, uh, uh, we'll, uh, We've got a presentation set up for tonight. Uh, we're hoping that uh, we'll we'll get through that in, in relative uh, quick order. Uh, Ian, I think am, am I supposed to have this screen first? If so, could we uh, switch over to me? Well, you should be able to screen share whenever you want to. All right. Does everyone see my PowerPoint? Yes. Excellent. So when, uh, when we were getting together as department heads uh, to prepare this year's budget, uh, we wanted to, to establish a, a theme or a mantra, something that, um, that we could all, I guess, rally around uh, something that portrays, you know, the situation we're in, the times we're in, and uh, accurately demonstrates how the township uh, as a whole, uh, from the Board of Commissioners all the way down to um, every single employee out there every day, uh, was able to, um, you know, weather the storm and get to where we're at. So we came up with unprecedented times, unprecedented performance. Uh, I think the unprecedented times speaks for itself, given the circumstances that uh, we've all encountered in 2020 and, uh, you know, sitting in our chairs now looking forward into 2021, where, which is where most of our conversations over the last month and a half have been, is trying to figure out what next year might look like. Um, and to be perfectly honest, uh, to a person, to a department, it, it's, it's been difficult to say with a whole lot of confidence, uh, what next year might look like. So um, the times are definitely unprecedented. Um, but having said that, and, and what I think is a tremendous compliment to all of our departments uh, led by those department heads uh, and the staff uh, is that the, the performance has matched the unprecedented times that we're in. Uh, and I you think back to uh, you know late winter, early spring in the, the height of the pandemic, uh, I, I, I would be remiss if I didn't recognize or remind uh, or mention, you know, that 
the, the township staff never stopped working. Uh, there was no shutdown here. Every single department kept flowing, albeit not necessarily in this building. Uh, through our OEM leadership and, and all of the staff jumping in and making quick decisions, we were able to identify new protocols to make sure that we were able to get work done. Um, and then in a time where no one really knew what was right, and what was wrong, and there was, there was certainly a, a fair amount of fear about uh, exactly what the virus was and what it meant, we still had we still had staff members like uh, Andy Pankos deciding that um, going in and getting an inspection done at a house uh, for a resident who didn't have a kitchen was worth it because uh, you know they needed a kitchen and he was willing to get that job done. And then we had public works employees, you know, every single one of them showing up every day, making sure that the, the garbage and the recycling was collected. Um, Mother Nature sprinkled in a couple major storms just for good flavor this year. Uh, our public works guys and gals, along with our police department and codes departments, all jumped in to make sure that streets were cleared, trees were cleaned up, you know, uh, generators were hooked up to signals, uh, trees that had fallen on houses were inspected, the families were taken care of. Uh, it, uh, it just, they never missed a beat. Um, and when we look at our recreation department and the work that they did, um, you, you didn't have to look far around us to see all of the, uh, the rec programs being canceled and everything being shut down. And uh, Tammy and her staff, that wasn't good enough for them. They immediately found new ways uh, and creative ways to hold the, those programs. Uh, and she'll talk about it later tonight about the, those you know, random residents that took advantage of it. Uh, and it, it was pretty awesome to watch and to see uh, just uh, how quickly they maneuvered and, and came up with some pretty cool stuff, uh, successful programs. Uh, and at the same time, um, you know, our police department in the year they've had, not just uh, as a department, but also as a profession, um, they've stepped up in every single way. Uh, they've taken the challenges uh, head on uh, in a proactive way, uh, making sure that they're transparent about the way they operate. Um, going out and talking with community, enhancing the relationships that they've been building for the last decade, um, and uh, continue every day to be very, very proud to, to have the police department we have uh, with the leadership um, that is running that department is second to none. And then uh, last but not least, uh, you take a look at uh, the Molly and the PIO and the work that she's done, um, enhancing the relationships that the township staff has in, in this building with you know, our partners over at the WBA, the school district, uh, and various other organizations uh, helping to, to set the table as we move forward uh, and try to um, work together with folks to, to offer services and, and enhance life in Radnor Township, uh, which is ultimately what we're all here to do. Uh, so I, I wanted to lead in with, um, with that. Uh, what I'll do now is I'll turn it over to the departments and let them give, let them give uh, quick updates on where they're at and what uh, what 2021 might look like for them, and then we'll circle back and and dive into the numbers a little bit. So without further ado, I will. Uh, I don't know, Ian. Do I need to do anything? Or are you going to take my screen away from me? Yeah, if you can just stop sharing your screen, Bill, at the bottom there. Stop share. Yep. All right, Mike, I think you might be muted. So it looks like we can see your screen. Now we just need to hear you. Hey, thank you guys. I'm sorry about that. I'm not the best on the computers, but I'm trying. <laughs> Even at 60, you can still learn. Uh, I'd like to talk about something I love since the last 30 years of being with Radnor Township and the Public Works. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about our 
our departments over there at the garage and what we do each and every day. I don't know, it's not advancing. Sorry, it's not advancing. I'm trying here. No. There it is. All right, this is the mission of the, and our vision for the department. As a whole, this year has been unprecedented, as we had said, but also we had stuck together as a group. And this year, even more than ever, each department has worked together to provide the services to the residents. And as Bill had said, we haven't missed a beat. We haven't missed one trash day or one recycle day in, in providing the essential services to the residents. These are the different groups within the public works. You guys know us well. You guys fed us lunches and, and have really been supportive of us. So you know each and every one of the guys probably from the garage. Uh, the solid waste division is made up of 20 guys and that group has this year just hung in there tough working together staying together working together and staying separate by being together with only the guys in each <laughs> truck it was one of the points that we have really tried bill and i has to been to keep the men separated as much as we can provide the service and keep our men safe and that has really happened this year it's worked well we, we, we struggled at times to, to hold enough guys together to get it done, but I'm really proud of these guys and what they have accomplished this year. Now I talk about my highway division where I come from. This year, our highway division is basically six men that provide the pothole repair, the, the sidewalk repair, help out with storms. This year with these two major storms we had, we were out there with the help of the police force, the, the parks division, and the sewer division, we all work together. One of the aspects we really worked on this year since I've taken over is I tried to implement us doing jobs in-house more. We've taken on larger projects. This year we did two large pipe jobs that in the past we might have passed off to an outside company, but my guys want to do the work. They, they take pride in the work they do and if it takes us an extra day or two because we only have five, six, seven guys, that's the way it'll be. But we want to do the work ourselves. In the long run, the residents win, the township wins, we save money, and my men feel like they accomplished something a little different. And maybe they did a big pipe job, maybe they did a giant sidewalk, but it's something different and they they're proud of the of what they put forth. Our sign department, they're an essential part of us with handling all our signs that are either discolored or bent or, or missing. They handle all our painting as far as our lines, our speed humps. They handle cutbacks. And Bill, in, who's in charge of the sign division, he's, he meets up with the police as part of the, the, the monthly meeting to discuss any sign issues that the police may have during staff traffic. The parks division, this has been a, a, a great year for the parks guys, as far as the weather's been good, they've been able to, to get a lot done. They bounced back and got the ball fields back together after we were shut down for those early months in the, of the spring. They, they, and the kids are still out playing ball. Not only do they handle this area, one of the major things they've taken on in the last year is when we have a storm, they're the group of men that go into the creek beds and basins to cut out any large trees that fall, any debris. It sometimes takes us a month after a storm to get cleaned up, but they're out there every day. Sometimes some guys are cutting grass, some guys are, are out cleaning stream beds. And then this year with the two major storms, they spent a lot of time doing yard waste cleanup as Lisa can tell you from her neighborhood <laughs> where they drag, they drag them down to the street our parks and highway division go out there and clean that stuff up and you know try to keep the roads clear getting ready for the next storm but it, they're an essential part of what we do and there's a lot of crossover now between the highway the parks the sewer i can't say that enough of how much this year that has really been a, an important part 
Our sewer division is made up of three men. They handle the checking the pump stations, which is a, a focal point of every morning for the first couple of hours. They check lines. They handle stoppages when they come across. They handle any stormwater lines that need jetted or cleaned. And Steve Amaran, the lead guy for the sewer department, probably does 50 markouts a day for different jobs for Miller Brothers or a home construction job. And also another thing that's become evident this year that we've had to address is the 811 program. We have to address it 24 hours a day. Usually I take the phone calls at night or a text message and then I send out one of them to mark it out in the middle of the night or as last week we had a uh, gas leak on 30 so I had to send somebody out to to mark that out and we have to do that to follow the, the rules now. At one time we, we we just kind of waited till the next morning but now with the rules in place by the by the state of Pennsylvania we're providing 24-hour service for that. Our mechanics, there's three mechanics, their jobs are consist of fixing everything from a weed whacker to a leaf blower to a trash truck to also being part of our this summer's program with the amount of yard waste we collected this year, one of their men actually helped Timmy at the hollow every Tuesday to grind the material up just because the amount of staffing we had and their knowledge of heavy equipment, they went over with Timmy and worked side by side um, taking care of the, the yard waste debris. We used to be able to do it once a month, but actually this summer we did it three, four times a, a month. We had to do yard waste which also got back to trash where the trash department during the summer months, I would have four trucks picking up yard waste. This summer with everybody being home and the storms we've had, every Wednesday we've had to put out seven to eight trucks to handle the amount of yard waste we, we have uh, received from the residents. But that's a service that the people love. You know, They can put out a, a bag and you can weed their beds and do other things and we're there to clean it up. That's our part of our job. And the area where we also have helped out a lot this year, and then you guys see it at the Township Building, is facilities. Our facilities, we have a guy that handles all scheduling of appointments for like uh, the electrician to come in and do the regular services, our maintenance service calls, but also our guys chip in. They they did some painting at our garage this, this summer from the, we had some damage from rain getting in. They painted some some rooms in our office. They installed these uh, dividers for the safety of the workers at the township building. We have some pretty handy guys that we, and you give them a chance to do a job like this, they actually enjoy doing something totally different and just being part of the, the big success of what we have. Budgets, I know, you know, Bill talked about it and we know it's, it's a tight year and we understand the economics. I do personally and I'm my people I work with but a couple of areas I still like this to address, and I think we could do it and have a cost savings in, in the years to come was one, if we're going to continue to provide the tree service and, and the right of way service for trees, we need to get back into tree maintenance slowly but steadily, maybe over a couple of year periods, add a two, couple of guys, a bucket truck. You know, we should be out there trimming stuff and cutting stuff back and not paying somebody outside to do it. And also that I think it comes in the preventative maintenance that keeps you know, some of our tree work with the storms. And I think, it, I mean, there's a cost in the beginning, but I think if we stretched it out over a couple of years, it would really pay off. And a second area I'd really like to see us move forward with is someday get our own electrician again. It, we had an electrician for many years and we got away from that. And I really think since my time upstairs, I see how much we need an electrician between our building maintenance with electrical problems and other issues. So we could use them for the signals. We could use them to oversee Higgins, our outside electrical company, when they have a big job. We could, our electrician could keep an eye on them to make sure we're getting the, getting our, you know, the service we, that we deserve. And it would be nice just to have electrician when there's a problem that arises at the last minute, he, we can get him right out there to change a light fixture or, 
or do a poll along the street, I think it would be something that in, in the long run, we would save money. And one last thing is just, we do have one opening still in the public works. We understand where we are economically. And, and I'm not saying we should hire it today, but it would be not, it'd be good not to forget that guy because every day we're out on trash and recycling, it takes 22 guys and we are at 20 men. And really some, we have to take a guy for two from the parks or the highway every day. I mean, and that's just the, you know, how it is and we're used to it, but it would be nice to have a little more flexibility. Finally, I wanna thank Leah, who without saying it is the greatest help to me down at the office. I, I forgot her in my budget presentation originally, <laughs> and I did not wanna lapse in this issue again. She is the eyes and ears of the office. And, and you guys know if you call, Leah gets it right to me or to Ricky, and she's a great asset. And thank you for all your support. Okay, I guess I'm next. I'm usually 50-50 on getting my presentation up here, so we'll see what happens. Let's hope tonight's the night you get the hit. <laughs> Well, I know I'm looking at it. Can you all see it? No, sir, not yet. Not yet. <clears throat> Ian, I have it on my screen. Is there something we should be doing different? Did you press screen share and then select that specific window for the PowerPoint when the option came up? I also have it ready to go on my end if, if you want to go that way. Let's just do that. Well, hold on. Let me, I have my OneDrive up. Can you guys see that? Okay. No, sir. Let's just go with yours, Ian. And let me get rid of this. There we go. There you go. Okay, so uh, as the manager said, this is a, the engineering department budget. So did that screen just change on me? Are you able to see uh, three gears? I see engineering department uh, 2021 budget. Uh, Steve, so just, just walk me through what slides you want to go to. Okay. Hang on again. Sorry, I got to be able to see what Ian's doing. Well, I'm just about through my presentation, so we should be okay. No, just kidding. Um, okay, and if you could drop it up, I'd appreciate it because I'm not seeing anything. <laughs> so the first slide, I actually have it on my phone, so sorry about the delay. We have about 120 slides to go through, so I'll try to be as quick as I can. Steve, it looks like we're looking at your screen now, which Steve, is- Steve, we're, we're, uh, yeah, we're on your screen. A if you leaf, leaping up on antelope, your... about ready to get going. How's that? You seeing the engineering department? Yes. You we do, we see slide one of 120. Yeah, oh, great. Okay. So you should be looking at three COGS. Um, the manager had mentioned that we are performance-based. We are a high-performance organization. That comes from the top down. Uh, and engineering is one COG in that organization. Our team members, we are small but mighty. Trish Sherwin, who keeps us all straight and is our chief cook and bottle washer. Doug Meter, inspector. Dennis Capella, project manager, and myself. So our tasks and duties, there's a lot, I'll just touch on them. We, we talk a lot about capital projects. Land development is another one. 
and technical support to other departments is a big thing that we do also. It's a large task and we enjoy doing it. We interact with all our other departments and they assist us. Resident stormwater concerns are huge. Of course, the permits, the CNO, the UNOs, Planning Commission, Shade Tree, all the inspections and the technical reviews. So the commissions and departmental assistance. So land development is really one of the big tasks that we have. When a developer comes in, the application comes through engineering. We are the liaison to the planning commission where that will start and ultimately go to the board. We perform the subdivision land development, zoning and stormwater reviews. We work with other agencies and staff for that. Shade Tree Commission has a lot of great initiatives. We provide the bidding assistance and administrative assistance to them work with the township Ar arborist as well as the grading permit reviews they do. And again, we work with other departments when they need our help for technical reviews or bidding assistance. And I, you look at the little puzzle piece, this is a team effort all the way around. Uh, I don't wanna, I, I definitely have to touch on this. The engineering department did not miss a beat during the pandemic. The governor had shut things down we worked on permits that were allowed. We worked on all the permits that were in the queue so that once the restrictions were lifted, we could issue them immediately, which we did. Our folks worked through the pandemic. Uh, same thing in storms and emergencies, you know, where we were needed out there, we were out there. Customer service was number one during that period when the governor had shut things down and it still is today. Land development, again, is, is a big item uh, right now, at the next planning commission, there's several large, for Radnor, large land development projects coming in, townhomes, single homes, Radnor Township School District. So these are very important. These help, these shape our community. They come through engineering. And again, those are the reviews we perform, saldo, stormwater zoning. We meet with owners, builders, developers, and residents. We work with staff. Uh, our traffic and transportation reviewer and our solicitor on that. Capital projects are probably the one thing we talk about the most uh, at commissioner's meeting because these are all the bids we have going out. So from a capital project standpoint, we, we will take a project through its inception, the bidding documents, the bid construction and the closeout. And of course that's all under the purview of the manager and the approvals by the board of commissioners. The types of projects, I'm not going to go through them all, but there are anything from pedestrian improvements to emergency projects to stormwater management, bridges, streetscapes, pretty much the whole gamut, as well as building items. Stormwater is uh, a topic that is near to my heart, and it is something that affects so many people in Radnor Township, and we are heavily involved with that. We meet residents all the time, and from those meetings, some projects do come about and I will go to the manager with those projects and ultimately they may go before the board and we'll talk about that in a little bit. This is one of the projects, emergency project at Robin Hood Road. I'm not gonna go too deeply into that. I think we talked about that pretty heavily at past meetings. Morris Road Streetscape Project. This is a really nice project. It's out to bid. Tomorrow is our pre-bid meeting. Uh, when this project is complete, I think the residents of Morris Road as well as residents of the township will be very happy with the end product. Roberts Road culvert, this was a half million dollar project to address an aging culvert that had deteriorated and also had some storm damage. And this is typical of what many of our other culverts are going through. And these are items we are gonna to have to address in the near and distant future. So this is a top-down item. Um, you look up top, there's no silos here, folks. We all work together. Uh, this starts with the township manager in the engineering department. Uh, we provide to sec technical support to all the departments, but they also help us. And that goes from finance, public works, police, rec, com, dev, and administration. I will tell you that the departments we probably work the, closely, the closest with are the police and the public works department. But this is a top-down initiative from the manager. Some budget considerations that are not in the budget. So our stormwater management ordinance is 15 years old. In stormwater terms, that's like dog years, right? This, this needs to be 
either revised or rewritten. Similarly, the subdivision land development ordinance. Now you're gonna hear one of my colleagues talking a little later about a comp planning zoning ordinance. In a perfect world, these would be done together. Uh, if they can't be done together, the stormwater can be done standalone. Scanning of saldo and grading permits. And uh, the manager at a previous meeting brought forth a funding mechanism for our stormwater projects. I think that's huge. I think it's a great initiative he put forth. And I'm hoping the board can pick some projects to move on that. This is our permitting and other items year to date. So the team members and of the engineering department are proud and honored to serve the commissioners and the residents of, town, of Radnor Township. We thank you. So if you wouldn't mind, I'm gonna load the other 80 slides, but no, that, that is the presentation. Thank you very much for your time. Can I, Steve, can you just, can you just go back through the, so the stormwater ordinance rewrite, the saldo, what was the other, I'm sorry. So the, the stormwater management ordinance commissioner is 15 years old. That, that's Yeah, really I just wanted to, I, I didn't quite catch the last three projects. They're the last three things. So that's what so, I. Uh, so Kevin Kashansky is gonna talk about a comp plan and a zoning ordinance. And in a perfect okay. world, these all go together, but if it's not a perfect world, the stormwater ordinance could be written standalone. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is we, we also have uh, a backup of items to be scanned into our system. That's saldo and grading permits. And again, the last one was the capital project funding that I noted Mr. White had come to the board with, uh, with a very, I, I thought, a, an outstanding plan to fund them. Okay, thank you. So I will stop sharing my screen. Thank you for your time. Good evening, commissioners. I'm gonna try to load this up. Can you guys see that? Perfect. Uh, well, good evening again, Kevin Kachansky with the Community Development Department. I'm here with the 2021 budget presentation. Our mission is to serve the residents and businesses of Radnor Township through the administration and enforcement of regulatory ordinances to assure the health, safety, and welfare of our residents and businesses and to provide efficient, courteous service. And we are dedicated to maintaining a safe and welcoming environment here in the township. Our organizational chart. Currently, we have six full-time employees, one part-time property maintenance inspector, and one part-time administrative position that is currently not filled and we're not seeking to fill that as part of the 2021 budget. Um, in addition, uh, we have a third party consultant that provides the township with two full time code officials and one part time rental housing inspector. Uh, and those individuals do have office regular office hours here in the township. Uh, administrative responsibilities, um, our administrative team uh, is responsible for processing permit applications and payments, contractors licenses, food licenses, rental housing licenses, public pool licenses, uh, as well as preparing applications uh, for the Zoning Hearing Board, Design Review Board, and the Historical and Architectural Review Board. They also prepare monthly reports, process departmental right to no requests, and schedule inspections for our code officials. Uh, this is a snapshot of where the department landed at the end of last year um, for all of the permit activity, as well as a comparison from 2019 and 2020 from January 1st through September 30th. Uh, as you can see uh, up at the, the top line for the construction permits, there was a significant drop off in the amount of construction permits uh, and that has a direct uh, effect on uh, the departmental revenue. Here's a snapshot uh, going back to 2014 of where the, the historical activity of the department was. Uh, and again, showing that ratio uh, in comparison of 2019 and 2020 from January 1st through September 30th. And again, that shows the drop off uh, with the COVID uh, impacts uh, that everybody felt. For codes and inspections, uh, I'll just highlight a few of these items for you. Uh, they perform plan reviews uh, and related building inspections. Uh, they respond to complaints. Uh, they support and respond to emergencies 24-7. Uh, and they also do a lot of coordination with the other township departments, uh, engineering, police, uh, and recreation um, are the primary ones that we coordinate with. 
Um, our code officials, Andy Pankos, uh, mentioned earlier, is our uh, loan in-house code official. Uh, Barry Isid is our third-party consultant. They provide us with two building inspectors, as well as plan review services. And Bill Bruno is our part-time in-house property maintenance inspector. Uh, and below, you can see the activity just uh, through the better half of this year um, that those individuals were able to accomplish. Uh, and here are some of the photos uh, from those construction activities. We have some foundation work on the left, some new homes going up uh, in the middle, and a renovation. Um, basically, it was a gut and strip for an existing uh, house that will be completely refurnished um, at the end. Uh, and when they're not doing that, uh, the, round, uh, the top left is some property maintenance issues with high grass. Uh, bottom left is uh, an illegal sign that we see popping up all over the place. So our, our inspectors are constantly pulling those. Uh, middle picture is a uh, hoarding situation that we got called down on. Uh, top right is a uh, tree through our house. Uh, you know, we have had a lot of storms and, and when those trees fall um, can create some significant issues. Uh, and then the bottom right uh, was a house fire that we responded to in the middle of the night and had staff on scene for the better part of 14 hours. Uh, rental housing, our rental housing inspector is through our third party consultant, Barry Isett. Um, we issued a total of 952 licenses. Uh, that equates to 3,436 total rental units. 3,363 are non-student and 73 units are student units. Our health responsibilities uh, fall primarily on our health inspector and our health uh, officer. Marie Carbonar is our health officer and Katie Carla Magno is our health inspector. And I'll just touch on a few of the things that they, uh, they deal with. Uh, they review applications and issue licenses for food establishment and public pools. Uh, they investigate investigate communicable diseases and infection control. Uh, they serve as the township liaison to the Board of Health, uh, and they also support and respond to emergencies 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, they issued 237 licenses uh, for food establishments, 28 permits for outdoor dining, 37 licenses for public pools, um, and as part of resolution 2020-61 that this board passed uh, to expand um, outdoor activities, uh, 13 temporary outdoor dining permits. Um, and those are two facilities that didn't otherwise uh, have outdoor dining reflective in the, the 28 above. Uh, some of the things that they involve themselves in every day, uh, investigating and uh, inspecting uh, mobile food vehicles, uh, whether they've initially come in or we get complaints, uh, investigating food establishments, uh, part of the emergency management team uh, is the center picture, uh, the top right picture, uh, inspections of uh, food establishments, uh, as well as most importantly, making sure that those establishments have all of their current certifications and food licenses are up to date. Uh, next, uh, fire safety inspections. Uh, Radnor Township currently has a formal inspection program for residential rental units only. We do not have a formal inspection for commercial properties. Uh, there are a little over 2000 businesses in Radnor Township that are subject to fire safety inspections um, as called out in the adopted International Fire Code. Um, the specific section that references this is section uh, 106.2, where it notes that the fire code official is authorized to conduct such inspections as are deemed necessary to determine the extent of compliance with the provisions of this code. And primarily, the fire safety inspections are intended to identify and prevent life safety issues such as dangers to the public from fires in commercial properties, dangers from property owners' complacence, and injury to local emergency services and first responders. So do we have to ask ourselves, are they really needed? And what our department staff, our inspectors are finding is that there's a significant number of violations to the International Fire Code and the International Property Maintenance Code, which have been adopted by this board uh, when they are on site performing inspections or are called out for emergencies. Some of the things that they are finding are non-functioning alarms, exposed, broken, overloaded electrical components, out of date fire suppression systems and blocked means of egress. Uh, and I'll highlight a few of those. Um, the bottom left picture um, is a picture of a broken emergency light uh, for egress on the outside of a building. So if there was an emergency at night, you know, typically those lights would come on uh, if the power went out um, to highlight the area for safe refuge uh, for people. Uh, obviously, if that's broken, that's not going to work and, and could lead to some issues. Uh, the middle picture is an out-of-date fire extinguisher. I note that this picture was taken at a, a, one of our local establishments September 24th, 2020. The date of the extinguisher inspection was 2017, so that is, is really far behind on, on the inspection. 
uh, an overloaded uh, outlet. If you look to the uh, bottom right of the main panel, you see that orange extension. They have three plugs plugged into that one that's really meant for one outlet. Um, again, that can cause overheating and, and can cause a fire. Um, we're often finding exposed wires at top left picture. Um, the center picture, uh, this was a, an establishment in downtown Wayne where the emergency egress um, was completely blocked. You'd have to climb over tables and chairs and uh, furniture to just get to the emergency uh, egress door. Um, and then as concerning um, is exposed electrical panels where the covers were removed and that obviously creates a, a big safety issue with uh, a possible electrocution hazard. Um, our current approved staffing levels do not allow for a formal fire safety inspection program to be established. Um, the goals of this program would be to review safety measures, uh, fire equipment, and address any associated concerns from those 2,000 businesses. Uh, we would like to get in there annually. Um, is to ensure businesses are maintaining safe conditions um, and ultimately to protect the health, safety, and welfare for the entire community. And again, those inspections uh, really should be done on an annual basis. Uh, it is anticipated that you know if this program were to go forward, that the first round it would take a year or, or two to get through it, get it set up, uh, would be funded by the township and would be equivalent to one full-time employee. Um, but we would probably have that as an outsourced uh, through our third party. Um, and then in subsequent years, once the program got off of its feet, um, that those inspections uh, would be billed directly to the business owners with no cost to the township. Um, future consideration, uh, Steve touched on this earlier, our comprehensive plan update. Uh, Pennsylvania Municipalities Planning Code requires and suggests that the uh, comp plan be reviewed every 10 years. Uh, the last time ours was adopted was 2003. So we are uh, about 17 years um, into our current comp plan. And you know it's important that serves as the planning document at which all other uh, ordinances should be based off and, and consistent with. So this is really outside of the stormwater, um, the first planning document that um, would be reviewed and then subdivision land development and zoning would be building off of that. Also for future consideration and, and see touched on this is uh, archive file scanning. Um, takes all of the paper copies that we have uh, in our work areas, uh, as you've seen in various pictures, as well as in our basements and scans those. Um, it provides a much more orderly and uh, easy access to those. Um, reduces storage in the basement for better utilization and would significantly cut down on the response time for right to know requests. And finally, uh, for future consideration is the eCode 360 map link. Uh, currently, our codes, all of our codes are online through eCode 360. Um, this would kind of be a spin off of that and have an interactive zoning map uh, that would allow for easy access for residents, businesses, developers, and contractors. Uh, to the specific detailed zoning regulations for every property in the township. And that would include zoning districts, uh, setbacks, coverages, and allowable uses. Uh, so uh, in conclusion, I'd like to thank the board for uh, entertaining us tonight and listening to our presentations and um, considering the budget that is uh, coming to you. Thank you. Hi everybody, Tammy Cohen, Director of Recreation. Can you see that okay? Yep. All right. Yeah, Tammy, if you got dual screens, it looks like we're looking at your presenter view, not the full screen view. So um, I mean, we can see the slide just fine. I'm just not sure if that's the way you want it shown. It's not, um, but on my desktop, which I just shared with you, I had it in just regular presentation screen. So I'm not exactly sure how to get it off of this. Um, oh, yeah, that may work if you just don't run to be defaulting to that. All right, well, I guess we'll, uh, we'll kind of go through here. Is that okay? Yeah, that looks good. All right. So thank you for the opportunity to go through this tonight. Um, the recreation department is currently comprised of four full-time uh, individuals, similar to uh, how Steve emphasized the engineering department. We're small but mighty. Um, so uh, we uh, also consist of 
approximately 100 uh, part-time seasonal staff members along with contractual staff members um, in addition to many, many volunteers throughout the course of a year. In order for us to be successful, it really takes being able to, to work uh, with, with regards to many folks within the township, namely the Board of Commissioners and the Parks and Recreation uh, Board, as well as the other departments in order to succeed uh, in our mission, uh, which just, I'm not gonna read detail for detail uh, our department's purpose, but we have a saying in our department that going above and beyond is business as usual. It's something that we take very seriously. We're very mission driven and focused in the delivery of the recreational services that we provide. So in order to achieve the mission, um, this is the breakdown of the seven, seven core areas basically where uh, we, we spend most of our time. Um, namely, of course, programming and community events, which is you know, the, the big, the backbone of the department. And of course, the parks and recreation facilities uh, that consist of scheduling operations and projects, which we do in coordination uh, with the public works department and the engineering department. Now, sometimes I think we take advantage of it, but Radnor truly is a community that has something for everyone. Um, you know, the value of recreation means something to everyone, but the great thing about Radnor is that with the wealth of recreational facilities that are available across the township, as well as the programming, it really enables the ability for endless be benefits to those who wish to take part. Recreational programming, of course, being one of the biggest areas that we focus our time on, um, we offer annually roughly 100, 100 programs a year, uh, give or take each year it changes um, you know, due to you know, different trends and things that happen. Approximately 3,000 uh, people participate annually. Our programming spans generations. We have things from preschool ages all the way up to adults. Uh, we're community driven. What that means is we really take our time to try and understand um, the populations and the different abilities that are out there and what people are interested in so that we can provide really great programming opportunities. Uh, we try to use the vast array of township parks and facilities and schools that we have available. Um, we offer scholarships, we have low cost options, and lots of different free opportunities for folks to take part. We also have a great, we also have a great online registration system that we adapted in the last year that has really made it a seamless process to sign up and register for programs. So I definitely want to point that out. Our, one of our biggest programs that we deliver, as you all know, is Radder Day Camp over the course of the year. Amazingly, um, it's a program that started in 19, 1941. So going into next year, we'll be on 80 years of celebrating this great program. We have an awesome staff uh, that come back year after year. It employs roughly 60, 60 to 65% of Radnor residents. And we have different components of the program that focus on teen development, as well as providing for different developmental needs uh, for kids throughout the township. So just a quick snapshot on that. With rising trends in developmental support that's needed, we've seen over the years where we've had a growing, definitely growing trends in being able to have, you know, to provide for kids with different types of special needs, ranging from one-on-one -on -one support to group-based support. Given the trends, we've also had a, a segment of programming called the Champions Program, which is designed specifically for kids with different developmental needs. Um, that has really become a great year round program of different types of opportunities available. Some of our uh, more uh, popular programs as programming can change from year to year has been those that are featured here with pickleball, skateboarding, uh, and of course, our wizarding, wizarding program that we run in house uh, that we actually run directly. Our program coordinator Tracy Kroom and our program supervisor Heather DeCanzio have run this program in the last two years directly and it's been really successful. The pandemic as you all know uh, created um, a big change to us for programming. Um, in, in March we were just about ready to get outside with an early spring and of course everything came to a screeching halt uh, but on the first day of the lockdown, lockdown, we already started to think about creative ways that we could deliver programming and be able to work within the new virtual, ro uh, virtual world uh, that everybody was starting to become familiar with. And within 
within two months, we had, uh, we had launched and ran over 25 successful virtual programs that allowed for a lot of social interaction, mental stimulation, having fun, and also we integrated some physical activities and families really loved it. Um, our challenges continued, of course, uh, when it came time to launching Radnor Day Camp, um, which followed up, of course, coming in June. And we, um, of course, had to come up with a new way of being able to offer day camp that was comfortable for folks. So not only did we do it virtually, but we also offered the camp outdoors in an in-person manner. Both were delivered with very strict procedures and guidelines. And of course, being outdoors, the day camp offered an opportunity at that point for a lot of kids to come together with the staff. But we followed a lot of very detailed health and safety procedures that really helped us be successful. And a lot of those procedures carried forward through the rest of the summer and into the fall, um, showing a new way of delivering programming with things like temperature checks and wearing masks and things like that. And we really saw programming take off where numbers had, had risen to all new levels. So that spawned a, a wide variety of different activities that have uh, come into existence throughout the fall. And we're just continuing to ride that success, that success as best as we can um, and continue to follow the standards and the procedures that we've put in place um, and just being ready to pivot as things change, as things evolve. Switching gears real quick to community events, which is another um, very big backbone of the department. Of course, in the last 10 years, typically, you know, we see 18 community events over the course of the year. Of course, this year, this year, unfortunately, there were a lot of changes. Um, we did have some cancellations, obviously big events like the fall harvest. Of course, Wheels of Wayne um, last, last spring and possibly this upcoming spring, spring have been affected and the annual daddy-daughter uh, daddy dance that would be coming up in February. A lot of those events have seen major changes, unfortunately, just due to um, you know, the impacts of the pandemic. Santa's delivery, which is gonna be coming up is another one um, we've been giving a lot of consideration to and hopefully planning some alternatives. As, as we look back on the summer, uh, we did see some success in being able to uh, kind of twist and turn some of our events and offer them in an alternative manner, like the back, the Great American Backyard Campout, where we did it as an at-home version, and we offered different types of awards and, and things and prizes for people who participated, and uh, it was definitely met with a lot of popularity. Uh, we even had one of our summer concerts at Clem McCrone, um, where we had uh, folks socially distanced within the park, and it was very successful. Unfortunately, as the summer had moved on and we saw rising cases and rising trends with, the, with, um, with COVID-19, we did cancel a lot of the events that had happened. But as time move on, moves on, you know, we keep trying to be as creative as, as we can in delivering those. Um, and hopefully as we move into 2021, we'll continue to see a lot more success, similar to what we've had over the years with lots of recognition and awards based on the events that we've done. As a matter of fact, in, in March, we were just about to win uh, a, a new award uh, for the Pennsylvania Recreation Parks Association uh, for excellence in programming for the night at the ballpark event. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, that got shut down uh, right as everything else was. And um, that's something we'll be celebrating at, at a later time. We'll also help to uh, hope to continue some of the trends, um, you know, and get recreation and, and events back on track. And once we get further into 2021, obviously we can't predict exactly where things are headed, uh, but we have annual participation um, that had been nearing, you know, 20,000 alone just in community events over the course of a year. So we'll be looking forward to getting back on track with those, and also having opportunities to bring members of the staff together. Um, through the community events. I know members of the community love interacting with them on a personal nature at, lot, at a lot of the events and look forward to that. And then working with our 30 plus community partners. Um, I know they reap a lot of success by taking part in our programming and events. And it'll be something that we'll be looking forward to getting back to as well. Uh, our high standards of responsibility. I don't, I don't wanna elaborate too much on each one of them, um, but strategic planning, um, our focus on providing meaningful experiences, strict guidelines, um, those are just inherent in our nature. 
Uh, we set a standard for the industry and something that we'll continue to maintain, whether we're doing programming that's, you know, in an alternative way or just, you know, in accordance with the norms that we have, you know, for the last many, many years. So looking ahead to recreation into next year, we're going to continue to, you know, shift and turn uh, wherever we can in order to be successful. Uh, we're going to make adjustments where needed to our community events, to our day camp, and a lot of our bigger programs. We'll continue to maximize Radnor Activity Center as possible, um, you know, giving it's an indoor facility, something that we've been using a lot of caution uh, in terms of getting back to recreation, and obviously continuing to be able to provide for, for everyone throughout the township. Switching gears quickly to parks and facilities, um, you know, we have a massive parks and recreation system. Uh, with tons of amenities and tons of great opportunities for folks. Um, the scheduling and the, uh, the usage at those parks is something that our department serves at a hub, as a hub for managing, um, you know, trying to keep those facilities all safe with regards to permitted usage. And of course, community usage is something uh, we've actually seen become a challenge in the last year, particularly, particularly with the pandemic, as we found a lot more folks using our facilities unauthorized. Uh, so that's been something that we've had to balance um, a lot in the last six months. And just overall, in general, we've seen a greater demand um, for our park system as people have um, you know, come to use these spaces in record numbers with increased activities that they've been doing as they look to uh, find places to go and things to do and ways to cope. Um, just with some of the adverse effects of the, of the pandemic. And this has created a lot of increased demands on the facility. Um, it's something that we're gonna, be one, we're gonna wanna be mindful of as we you know, continue to go into 2021. And as we continue to manage um, you know, our high standards of responsibility uh, for safety and maintenance, managing and mitigating liabilities, and then just being mindful as we move forward on key projects to keep our parks safe um, and keep them up to date. And then just lastly, as we look ahead, um, we know we have some projects that we're still in the process of completing that we're going to be working on as we turn the corner into 2021 with the Fenimore Woods re renovations, which is a really big pro project that we want to accomplish um, that uh, we'll be utilizing bond money from uh, 2016. It also included Ithan Valley with some park improvements. Uh, there was also another bond um, from 2019 uh, for Odorisio Park and Callum Park's basketball courts. Those are projects that we are going to see through to completion. Um, and just continuing to um, work through the trail projects. I know Steve oversees those. Um, and those are something you know, that have been very important to members of the Radnor community. And essentially just continue to address the high demand that we see um, on the parks and trails as we move forward when funds do become available. So in short, I just want to thank you um, all for the opportunity to serve. Um, our Radnor Township Parks and, and Recreation Facilities certainly do stand apart, stand apart um, from many other local communities. And we enjoy being part of that success and continuing on in that mission. And Ian, if you would run the uh, police department's presentation, please. Thank you. Uh, good evening, commissioners, Mr. White. It's a pleasure to make our 2021 budget presentation. Um, good evening to our residents. And as I start off, I'd like to thank my fellow department heads uh, for their participation this year in helping the police department obtain its goals. We'll go right into our first slide. We'll be doing a very brief review. Um, we have 43 officers. 30 of them are what they call the backbone of the police department. They're the patrol division, the officers you see day in and day out, holidays, uh, responding to 911 emergencies and accidents. We have four detectives. The highway patrol unit is, consists of four officers, one of them a supervisor. Um, our administration team, which manages the police department, is a total of five. We have one integrity control officer, one sergeant who um, handles all our drug screening and personnel uh, complaints. Our civilian staff is two administrative assistants, an auxiliary services supervisor, very busy job over all of the animal and parking regulations, uh, crossing guards, and everything in between. Um, 
We have one records management coordinator, which means they help handle the police department um, computer system. We also have 10 crossing guards and three meter inspectors. All of these are a part-time trying to operate as efficiently as possible. The department specialization. We have four canine dogs, uh, three bomb, one drug. We have five SWAT officers that it's part of their duty. So they're not extra officers. They participate in a regional team, which saves us money. When we've had all the major events, we've had SWAT team here at no cost to the township. Three hostage negotiators, four drug task force members. Those two jobs are also part-time out of regular officers duty, no additional cost. We just have to pay for their training. We have one part-time emergency management coordinator, which we'll be talking about later. We also have one part-time social media officer and community relations specialist that, as you know, we're trying to get out and let people know what we're doing in a fully transparent way and sharing the good stories about policing here in Radnor. Um, we have two body-worn camera video officers. They are existing employees, but I wanted to let you know after your phenomenal support of the camera system, these officers are under a lot of work. We're getting a lot of video requests uh, when we're on police calls. So the system is working, but it does uh, have some accountability issues that we have to maintain control over. We have four fatal crash reconstructionists. I'm very pleased to announce that they are not busy. Um, it very rarely happens. We have a safe township and we continue to work on that. That is part of their regular duties. They are not extra officers. We have 10 officers, major incident response team. That was what MERC stands for. These officers responded to Philadelphia and Upper Darby this year. Um, they also responded to both Villanova championships. Uh, we have seven multi-denominational volunteer chaplains with the exception of their training, their shirts and their hats. Um, these chaplains come out and volunteer for the township. We just had a response last evening, but our citizens being involved. Radnor Citizens Police Organization cannot say enough about this great group of dedicated citizens who was out even yesterday working on uh, the community event and our youth aid panel volunteers who uh, meet children who uh, have an issue with the police and we're able to work it out without the criminal justice system. Next slide. Um, we're asking uh, the township to consider um, three new positions for the police department. I'll start with the first, the emergency operations coordinator and accreditation manager. As you know, COVID-19 really geared us up. Normally we have a, a, an event such as the national championship or a major storm and it's a part-time position. We've learned that we need to go and really handle a lot of different things, including the township's emergency management plan, which will be coming uh, to the board of commissioners for review at the next regularly scheduled meeting. But we have natural disasters, large scale event programming. Um, I'm, I'm not actually gonna read all of that, but one of the things that we're hoping this officer would do is join us in an accreditation process to get the police department um, accredited by uh, the Pennsylvania uh, State Police, where we would have be established with that, which is 126 standards, which we would have to follow. I'm gonna go right to the next slide. Um, we would like to have a high density response unit, which has to do with active shooters, significant responses. Um, and I'm gonna go to the next slide just to keep this moving. As you can see, uh, the red lines, the border, we would add two officers roughly during the business week who would be assigned day shift. They would patrol inside the red borders. They would not leave there unless there was extraordinary circumstances. The active shooter and open air attacks, uh, most of those incidents <laughs> less than five minutes. With that happening, we need to have rapid arrival of police. As you can see the zones, it really covers our critical infrastructure. Now, every house and everybody's important. You look at the other ones outside the highlighted areas, they will be covered by regular police patrol. So it means that your beat car, let's say it's the Brumall car, would not be leaving the area because of that reason. We'll go to the last slide. These are the areas that they would cover in the high density response. Again, with the information about attackers, robberies, and the major majority of our calls happening in this densely populated area, you guys know what they are, but I don't want to touch. I just want to touch that schools are our top priority for safety, just hands down. These would be enhanced during the business week with two extra officers and a total of three. And I'll go to the last slide. I just want to thank the Board of Commissioners for your support, Mr. White, for his support, and I would like to thank the phenomenal men and women that comprise the Radnor Police Department for their professionalism and dedicated service. During this COVID pandemic, it's been phenomenal to serve with them and the other township employees, and I thank you for listening to my presentation. <laughs> Ian, if you could... Uh... <clears throat>
tee up finance department, please. <clears throat> Excuse me. Thank you. And again, my thanks to the board and to Mr. White uh, for your time tonight and, al and allowing us to step through these presentations. Uh, my first slide is uh, just a departmental overview, just touching on that our department administers the following financial functions of Radnor Township. Uh, before I mention these, I uh, just want to mention <clears throat> staff in the finance department were comprised of six full-time employees and three part-time employees who administer and carry out these various functions. Uh, they include accounting and financial reporting, treasury and investments, payroll and human resources, pension administration, budgeting and expense monitoring, annual audit and financial report compliance, IT, real estate tax and utility billing, the Act 511 business tax administration, accounts payable, debt service management, contract administration, bids and RFPs, grants management, insurance management, right to know compliance, and last but not least is our switchboard operations. On the next slide, um, long gone are the days of the finance department being that, that back office group of people who nobody knows or sees, they're always huddled behind their desk and crunching numbers. Um, we as a group have uh, the, the, uh, the responsibility and the great opportunity to actively engage with a very diverse consumer base. We're very much uh, hands-on uh, teamwork group of individuals uh, who we interact and touch and, and are involved with residents, businesses, business owners, contractors and vendors, outside professionals, community service organizations, governmental and regulatory agencies, our elected and volunteer boards and commissions, our active employees and our retired employees. Uh, they keep us very busy and engaged, and uh, it does make it fun. On the next slide, uh, one of the things I'm impressed with, and, and since day one, I've always have been impressed with the teamwork that exists within the group and, and the, and the uh, group of people that we have working together. While there are those who specialize in certain areas, we all overlap and work together. Um, and we're touching the lives of people on a daily basis, uh, whether it's the actives, the retired, outside people, residents, businesses, we all have an opportunity to touch lives and make a difference. Um, and each of us does it in our, in, our, in, our own, in our own special way, but together as a team uh, and to ensure that we continue practices that we've established over the years, uh, the, the GFOA awards for excellence in financial reporting, what we're committed to are the following, um, following which tie back to our core functions which is managing the accounting and financial reporting infrastructure, providing the internal controls and safeguarding of assets, oversight and monitoring of the treasury and investment functions, providing excellent service so through payroll and HR functions, supporting our active and especially the retired, retired employees and their families, uh, responsible for pension administration, um, above and beyond working with the employees and the retirees, it's the annual funding and the required regulatory reporting uh, for our civilian and police pension plans. Um, together, we work with the manager and the department heads in support of the township's budgeting and expense monitoring activities. On the next slide, um, we have the pleasure of working with CARFAC and our independent auditor to satisfy the annual audit and financial report compliance and our regulatory agency, agency filings. Uh, these include uh, EMA, DCED, GFOA, just to name a couple. Um, we're committed to ensuring the township's IT requirements are up to date, including all software, hardware, security protocols are satisfied, uh, managing and working with 9,000 plus residential and commercial property owners in the real estate tax and utility billing processes. Um, essentially we have one and a half to two people who manage thousands of transactions on an annual basis, uh, managing customer accounts and posting uh, payments for real estate, stormwater, sewer, and keeping all that straight and up to date. Uh, also managing and work working with the 2000 plus businesses to ensure uniformity in the enforcement and compliance of the Act 511 Business Tax Administration. Critical function. 
Um, also, providing for accurate and timely processing of accounts payable and debt service management obligations to our vendors, our lenders, uh, ensuring that all of our, our uh, general obligation bond uh, payments are timely made and uh, everything is up to date. On the last slide, um, a lot of work goes into the oversight of the contract administration, bidding the RFP process, uh, ensuring that we have timely awarding of contract work to qualified low cost bidders. Actively engaging in grants management, applying for and securing grants for projects and for funding opportunities as provided through various federal, state, and local agencies, in particular throughout the pandemic as an opportunity for PEMA and FEMA funding, as well as uh, CARES Act funding reimbursement. Uh, we work with our outside professionals and brokers on insurance management to provide coverage and protection and making sure that they're qualified and reputable carriers for all of our insurance needs. Maintaining right to no compliance with timely and proper responses to all requests for public records. It's an area that has grown significantly in the past 10 years um, with almost double the amount of right to no requests coming in annually as compared to about 10 years ago. A very, very busy part of our department. And lastly, um, we're ensuring that all visitors, callers, uh, that people are warmly welcomed and serviced by our staff on the switchboard operations. Um, that's just a brief overview. As I mentioned, we have six full-time, three part-time staff. Um, and again, through this pandemic, I'm very proud to say that whether in the office, working from home, uh, working together, um, we didn't skip a beat. And thanks to all the, our department heads and, and, and the manager for your support uh, throughout, and uh, thank you to the board for your time tonight. Okay, thank you. I um, just as we wrap up that the, the last group here is administration. Before we dive into the numbers, I asked Molly to put together a quick update. Uh, she's working on a couple projects um, that I felt like uh, were important to keep the board updated on in the public. So, uh, Molly, uh, thirty seconds. Take it away. No, <laughs> here I go. Okay, good evening everyone. This has certainly been a very busy year in the Radnor Township Office of Public Information a year filled with unprecedented challenges and tangible team victories. Many thanks to the Board of Commissioners, Mr. White, as well as my colleagues for the privilege of working hand in hand to deliver results of which we can all be proud. The Randner Township Office of Public Information strives to create and maintain effective lines of communication <clears throat> between the government of Radnor, its employees and the public it serves. As public information officer, my goal is to promote awareness and understanding of Radnor Township by providing clear, timely, and accurate information about policies, programs, events, and other activities to residents, business owners, employees, and visitors. This year, in partnership with our community, we have faced COVID, managed civic demonstrations, and battled severe weather events like SAES. It became necessary for the Public Information Department to refocus efforts on information dissemination, media relations, and crisis communications. It became ever more important to help maintain and uphold the township identity, write press releases with accuracy and speed, draft statements for government officials, strengthen community partnerships, and work efficiently with the various department heads, most importantly, the Office of Emergency Management. The internal communications component was essential, and I am proud to have such a strong group of colleagues to turn to for fast and accurate information. For 2021, the focus will remain on communications and expand to website redesign and organizational branding. When I look forward to the priorities coming up this year, communications remains very high. The daily communication function between public uh, information officer and the various township departments informs messaging to our key constituents. This includes providing the public with accurate, timely, and consistent information in emergencies and non-emergencies alike. 
We will also be launching a branding campaign deliverable in uh, April of 2021. This is a focused effort to remind citizens who we are in addition to our services. We will propose use of the maroon, black, white, and gold logo, employ uniform fonts, and practice brand usage consistency across all mediums. We will highlight our Radnor Township motto, the best place to live, visit, I'm sorry, to live, work, visit, and do business on the main line. We will also be launching a website redesign. That will be deliverable in 2021 also, also um, hopefully the month of April. Our static site will become a mobile first accessible platform customized to help citizens complete tasks and find what they need quickly. This will modernize township online services, web presence, and communication strategies. Our goal is to actively reach, inform, and engage Radnor citizens for a better civic experience. Lastly, I've developed a vision statement for 2021 to provide an effective communication system that serves the people of Radnor Township, enhances economic prosperity, and preserves the quality of our community. With the website redesign project and branding campaign, the township is capitalizing on an opportunity to deliver consistent communications to our community stakeholders at a time when open dialogue is more critical than ever. Thank you. All right, thanks, Molly. I'll um, I appreciate that. So, uh, I just before I jump into the number side of things, I, I want to thank the board again for indulging us on the presentations. I know, as commissioners, you guys are are well versed in what we're doing on a day to day basis. You know, you're you're looped in on email, email exchanges and phone calls, and um, you know, we're aware that 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 you guys are uh, in tune with what's going on. Uh, but it's nice uh, for the folks that may be watching at home, uh, the folks that are watching this for the first time, maybe get a, a little different taste on what it is the township does. And clearly when you go through the presentations, uh, you can see uh, the, just the, the vastness of the, the, the different priorities that each department uh, is working on every day. So I do appreciate the time uh, to let us get through that. Um, Hopefully my screen is showing now. It should have the 2021 budget presentation uh, slide on it. Um, so really quickly, I'm gonna go through this uh, at, at virtual warp speed. Uh, just slow me, slow down if you want me to uh, stop and, and go into more detail on this. But in the interest of time, um, again, what we're hoping to do tonight is just set the groundwork uh, for you know, what the next month or so where we We'll get into more detail on, on the more um, uh, uh, necessary topics. So uh, we've already gone through um, the departmental presentations. Uh, what I'll step through here is the 2021 op, uh, general fund operating statement. Our major expense and revenue assumptions, uh, we'll get into, into capital a little bit, uh, as well as our community organizations, and then the next steps. Um, so as we typically do, uh, when we roll out the numbers, we start at baseline. Uh, and baseline represents, you know, the township's operation as it exists right now uh, before we uh, start rolling in any new uh, staffing, any new programs or services. Um, so as you would imagine, um, the baseline at this point, um, as part of our budget discussion this year, hopefully we can spend a little bit of time on uh, our reliance on the business taxes. We've started this conversation in years past, and it's it's led as I opened with with a couple real estate tax adjustments that are uh, proving to be very beneficial right now. Um, but uh, continuing to to shift uh, away from business taxes in terms of uh, requiring those for our annual operating needs, because uh, as as we can see in a very quick time, those business taxes can back up on us. Um, also, at the same time, the numbers that we're looking at right now uh, do not include a millage change for the real estate tax. Um, we wanted to show the numbers again at baseline, uh, and then we can uh, have discussions and talk about any adjustments on that front as we move forward. Uh, services are at today's levels. Uh, as you heard from a couple of the departments, we will be proposing some additional uh, areas, additional staff in a couple of departments with programs. 
uh, capital. At this point, we're only looking at pay as you go, which is basically departmental uh, and fleet replacements. Um, and then uh, from a capital standpoint, a pay as you use standpoint, our infrastructure uh, will focus uh, next year on uh, digging in and, and getting as many of the 2019 bonded projects complete as we can, as well as starting to focus and implement on the stormwater projects, uh, assuming that we have a, a, a funding plan uh, adopted when we roll into next year. Uh, and then our fire and community organization funding, uh, we've based what you'll see in these numbers, we've based off what they've requested. Um, and I'll get into more detail on that when we get to that slide. Um, I included this slide, it's, it's a repeat from uh, prior years. Uh, I'm not gonna go into a whole lot of detail other than to just as a, a bit of a history lesson on the last decade, um, for the first, from 2011 to 15, we saw uh, explosive growth on the business tax side. And what we, what we did as a township is uh, we relied on that for operating purposes. And now in the last three years and, you know, highlighted by this year, which is the biggest drop, uh, we're seeing that the reliance on those business taxes makes it difficult to accomplish things that uh, normally we would uh, be relying on. Uh, the OPEP funding plan is a great example, something that we initiated 10 year, or six years ago. We're adding to it every year, and now all of a sudden, revenues have backed up, up on us, and we're looking at a $1.8 million uh, program that's difficult to squeeze in with everything else. So when we get down to the numbers, uh, I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail. We're looking at 2018 and 19, those are actuals. This is all coming directly out of the financial software, which does a great job of tracking budget numbers into to date numbers. What it doesn't do a great job is forecasting where we think we might end the, the, the year. So uh, for discussion purposes, we'll look at the 2020 budget column uh, we are not going to hit these revenue numbers. Uh, we're going to fall several million short. Uh, but at the same time, there are also cost savings being realized on the expenditure side. We think for 2020, we're going to end at about a $2 million deficit. Uh, so it's showing 1.7 million now. Um, we think that we're going to probably be closer to 2 million when it's all said and done. And again, where, where I started the, the presentation or the meeting on tonight is uh, referring back to the strong cash reserves that we've been able to maintain through the years. Um, that's what's going to allow us to continue to operate uh, and provide services uh, without having to make a quick immediate uh, tax adjustment to, to maintain the status quo, uh, which we'll get into here momentarily. For 2021, the numbers as they exist now, uh, we're looking at, uh, again, you can see the Act 511 taxes, uh, we're forecasting at about 12.5. Again, we're, we're anticipating that uh, businesses took advantage of the revised filing guidelines that the board adopted for them uh, and took this year's losses in this year. Uh, if that pans out, next year's revenue should rebound a little bit. Uh, we're also expecting uh, realty transfer tax to be a little bit more normal. Um, and we're counting on some additional um, tax revenue generated from the full-time Act 511 uh, person that will be hired in the finance department uh, shortly. Uh, similarly, the, uh, the permits, uh, as Kevin touched on his presentation, we've seen those back up on us significantly. Next year, uh, at 3.5 million on the aggregate, it's far less than what we were realizing pre-COVID. Um, so we feel like those numbers might even be a little aggressive, but they're, they're certainly not unrealistic based on uh, history. And then on the expense side, uh, looking at about a $35 million total general fund expense, as you can see, that is very much in line with prior years. So the bottom line for general fund next year as it exists right now is about a $1.5 million deficit. Um, I, I will just point to the footnote real quick. Uh, we can read that at some other time. It's, a, it's an accounting uh, issue that, that we're hoping to resolve. Uh, at the end of the day, we will not spend 9.4 million in other operating this year out of the general fund. Most of that's tied up in escrow money. So. Uh, Seven million is in seven to seven and a half million is more in line with reality. So I'll take a moment here and just touch on uh, program expansion requests. Some of this you heard from the, the departments during their presentation. Uh, we have a police uh, full-time emergency management sergeant, which would uh, equate to the addition of one officer. 
we would ask that if approved, we roll with that on January 1st of 2021 at an estimated 2021 cost of 150,000. Uh, that's a fully loaded uh, new officer cost. Then uh, the chief also highlighted uh, the, uh, the necessity for the, the high density beat or the, the benefits of having a high density beat and the two officers that would um, staff that, uh, that particular assignment. Uh, if approved, we would look at uh, a midsummer implementation. The theme being there that uh, by July 1, we'll have a better understanding of where the business taxes have come in at um, and we can uh, adjust accordingly. Uh, the police accreditation program, uh, again, Chris touched on that. Um, these are contracted services to a company that would shepherd us through um, the implementation of the various policies that are required to achieve accreditation. accreditation. Uh, we can talk in more detail at an up upcoming meeting, but um, there's a, a GIS coordinator position that I think would serve uh, or add a lot of value to um, not just public transparency in terms of infrastructure um, and, and data, but it will also help us as a township make better decisions based on that data. The GIS coordinator will benefit every single department uh, some more than others, uh, the obvious ones being public works, uh, engineering and codes and mapping all of our inf infrastructure and, and assets. And not only that, but um, assigning a grade or a, you know, a, a where they're at in their useful life so we can start tracking and planning years in advance on replacement. Um, then we're also, um, there's also a lot of value in adding an, a project engineer. So this would be uh, a someone who has an engineering degree, uh, someone who could come in and immediately start designing some of the smaller projects that we're currently shipping out to a third party engineering firm. Um, we know that uh, between our stormwater projects that we're hoping to get rolling on next year, uh, some of which that we're rolling on now, uh, and if the person was on staff now, they'd be helping do that. Um, but we know that uh, we also have our general capital uh, everything from curbs, sidewalks, street jobs, some of the things that um, Mike Simmons touched on with the, the public works guys are doing now, the junior engineer or the project engineer can design those projects for us instead of uh, shipping that out to a third party. Um, and then also uh, that person will be, as the name indicates, a project engineer, someone that will manage these projects uh, through the life cycle that Steve highlighted in his presentation. So we've, um, the full cost of this person is obviously more than 45,000. We have offset that with a reduction in how much we think that we would spend on third party engineers. Um, obviously that's, that's a little bit more of an art than a science um, because many of the, the third party engineer projects, um, you know, it's tough to sit here today and, and know exactly what those might look like next year. Um, but we've, we basically took anywhere from 70 to 80,000 of costs that we would otherwise be paying third party uh, engineering firms um, and allocated that uh, or used that to offset the cost of this new position. Um, and then Kevin touched on the fire inspector. I've identified it here uh, because of its priority and its need. It's something that we should evaluate um, and we will evaluate next year and we will bring something to the board uh, with an effective date of, of 1122 at the latest. If, if we can roll this out sooner, we, we certainly will, uh, but it's something that we will be looking at. Um, not included, but other requests that were made, some of the departments touched on these, the, the tree crew and the electricity and public works, uh, as well as our comp plan updates, ordinance reviews. Uh, the reason why they're showing up in a budget meeting is, is we would uh, in all likelihood have to hire a consultant to come in and shepherd us through the process. So there is significant costs associated with those programs. Um, at, at some point in the hopefully near future, those will, those will rise in priority and we could start attacking them. But at this point, due to the revenue shortfall and the other priorities, um, we, we left those uh, kind of below the line, so to speak. Uh, how all of this will impact general fund cash balance, um, understanding that we'll have back-to-back -back years with deficits there's a lot going on on this slide. I'm just going to jump to the bottom. Um, you can see resulting 2021 ending cash balance of about 7.6 million. Uh, that would put us uh, roughly a million, uh, maybe a little bit more short of our fund balance policy. Uh, the policy does let us go below it, provided that we uh, implement a plan to restore and get us back up to the level. 
Um, normally, if I were here with my finance director hat on, I would uh, I'd be kicking and screaming and saying, "No way, no way, no way." But um, you know, looking at this from a little bit broader perspective, uh, given the the unprecedented times that we're in. Uh, the amount of uh, service that is required of the township to provide, it's hard to pull back on any of those areas um, that we have the cash. Uh, so as long as we set up a plan in 2022 and beyond to help restore that and build those balances back up, uh, a one year dip uh, seems prudent. Uh, and that does include the, the 424,000 and change uh, for the additional uh, personnel and program requests. Uh, some major revenue assumptions, and this is where I'll speed up. This is mostly review. Uh, our, um, our upside down peace sign is our revenue makeup. As you can see, Act 511 and real estate are our, still our two biggest pieces. Um, permitting is the other big piece, and then all other. Uh, when we take a look at the township's historical real, uh, real estate millage, this is just a quick glimpse. Um, and again, it, I, I'm beating a dead horse, but the, the increases in 19 and 20, uh, while the percentages are tough to swallow at 6%, when you look at the actual millage, uh, it, it's, it, it's not that, that uh, drastic um, as, as we like to joke and is, it doesn't take much of a change with our millage rate to, to generate a high percentage quickly. Um, but you can see that for many years, we were relying solely on the growth of business taxes to uh, fund our operations. Um, and as we've talked about in years past, we were running into a little bit of issue as those business taxes backed up a little bit on us. Um, but thankfully, uh, the million and a half that the, the last two tax increases have generated are helping out tremendously now. Uh, when we take a look at the Act 511 taxes, our biggest piece is the business privilege. Uh, complemented with the mercantile. Uh, the real estate transfer is also critical. And the local services represents uh, the number of employees actually working in Radnor. So our general fund revenue summary, I'm not going to go through these numbers. This, uh, at your own leisure, can you can go through and see. Um, two quick highlights is that for 2020, we are not going to show an increase. In fact, this bar is going to be uh, a couple million down from 2019. Uh, so you will see when that when we actually get 2020 actuals, you'll see the downward trend from 19, 20, 21. Uh, again, we might be a little bit conservative in our revenue revenue estimates for 21, um, but we'd rather go that way and it, and hit them than aim too far or stretch too far and end up mid year next year uh, having to scramble a bit. Looking at expenses. Um, Again, this is this is something that we can read through at our own leisure. It, it sets up how we've um, identified what our expenses are. Wages are based on union contracts. No increase in healthcare again next year. Uh, the MMO increase we discussed at the end of September, and um, we've we've hit pause on OPEB um, again just to try to uh, stem the tide, so to speak. Uh, here's our staffing numbers by department. Again, that's something we can look at. Uh, but generally speaking. Um, you know, from a high water mark of about 165 full-time employees in 2003 to our 128 now, um, and still by and large uh, offering the same service, uh, except maybe not without the, the full rear door pickup and, and garbage. Um, th there's a couple slides here that, that break out our, our uh, wages and pension. Uh, again, I'm not going to go into a lot of time or detail on this, but just quickly, you can see that our estimates for 2021 are in line with where we've been over the last four years. Uh, pension moves a little bit on us. So you can see we had a downward trend uh, for the past three years, and we're blipping back up now, uh, as Bob touched on at the meeting in September where the MMO was adopted, that that's, that's due to uh, actuarial losses from uh, market returns in 18 and 19. Um, and then our debt service, uh, again, as you can see, uh, pretty, pretty level over the years. Uh, this does include um, some, the anticipated savings from the refunding that was adopted earlier tonight. Um, but roughly uh, 4.9 million is where we can expect to be at next year in debt service. Taking a look at our total debt portfolio, you can see that it's relatively level until about 2028. Um, actually with a, a, a sizable drop off in 2026, and then it, it steps down. 
uh, theoretically, in these years where it steps down, the capacity for the township to borrow again to, to fund its capital program will, will be available to us. Um, we just got to figure out how to get from 2021 to, to those dates. Uh, again, like the revenues, I'm not going to go through all the details, but uh, you can see here uh, that, you know, revenue in general is, is in line with prior years. I, I always say that when it comes to our biggest expense, which is our wages, you know, we're, <coughs> excuse me, we're forecasting based on full employment from January 1st to the end of the year. Typically, the way it goes in any given year is, you know, there's turnover, there's vacancies, there's, there's a lot of um, ups and downs, ads and puts. Uh, so we budget more worst case scenario. Uh, and so I, I, when we see the actual numbers for 2020 and 21, uh, I fully anticipate them being in line with 18 and 19. And that makes sense since staffing has remained the same for all those years. Uh, quickly looking at capital, uh, as I touched on early, the, this is the only pay group that we're looking at funding uh, that, that is included in the budget numbers as they are presented right now. This is our fleet, departmental equipment, uh, a small amount for IT, uh, PEG, uh, which is the, the public education and government channels that we get um, through our agreements with Comcast and Verizon. And then some of our smaller facilities like security cameras um, and some of the, the technology that goes into our facilities, um, but not bricks and mortar. The pay group, or pay as you go group, uh, this is a quick summary of what that looks like. Uh, we're like, like I said at the beginning, we're at about 1.5, 1.6 million for 2021. Uh, that's in line with where we think we'll be for the next few years. If, uh, if this was backward looking, um, we could see a, a little bit of an uptick in each of the years as we add leased vehicles, uh, as we re, uh, renew our big truck fleet and trash and recycling and our dump trucks. Uh, there's an uptick in the expense on an annual basis for those leases, but once we get to the point where those vehicles are uh, through the cycle, uh, the, the expense will plateau. So the capital assumption is not included in our base, and this is similar to prior years. Uh, is our infrastructure, our parks, sanitary sewer, uh, and stormwater for now. Uh, the liquid fuels and the road resurfacing program, that is in there, uh, since most of that is funded through liquid fuels. Um, and we do include a small amount from general capital to, to get that up to a full million. Uh, and then hopefully, as we talked about in September, at the end of September, we'll have a stormwater plan that'll allow us to, to get rolling on some of those projects. And then, as we did in 2019, uh, we should uh, look to continue our conversations on uh, funding infrastructure, our parks, uh, and what we're going to do with the sanitary sewer system. Uh, just for informational purposes, this slide identifies, you know, the projects that we have on the books, so to speak, uh, and how much those are. As we've talked about in years past, the way these are allocated by year is, is really based on more of a smoothing than it is any kind of priority or actual, um, <coughs> excuse me, trying to prioritize one project over another, um, it's more intended to just show that uh, if we started today, there's lots of work to do. And then wrapping up here, our community organizations, we sent out, um, excuse me, we sent out um, forms for each of the entities to fill out and return back to the township. Uh, those will be forwarded to the board uh, tomorrow. <coughs> Man. Uh, as you can see here in the, the one column, that this is what we paid them in 2020. This is what they've requested for next year uh, if they filed a form back. And the amount proposed is what is included in the budget numbers that you're looking at tonight. So as you can see, um, you know, I think a lot of these, uh, actually all of them, all of these entities deserve a great deal of credit. They understood the, the situation that we're all in. Um, they all came back with flat or even maybe in a slightly reduced request for next year. Uh, some of the really, really smaller ones asked for a bit more. Um, and, and we obliged through these numbers here. Uh, but I, I did want to recognize each of those entities specifically on coming back to the township with a realistic, um, a realistic request. And hopefully when all said and done and adopt, a budget is adopted, we're able to uh, accommodate um, as much of this as we can. So as we look at our next steps, hopefully there will not be snow on the ground as we have in this picture. Um, 
but uh, we have some dates on the budget calendar. Uh, we have our regular meetings at the November 16th, I'm sorry, the November 9th and 23rd. Uh, and then we also have open Mondays on the 16th and 30th if needed. Um, what we can do going forward is, as this center block indicates, uh, some of the larger decisions, discussions, uh, we can decide if we want to include those on regularly scheduled board meeting nights uh, and carve out some time to, to drill into those. Uh, I would also recommend that we, we spend some time talking about the, the new positions and programs if the board wants to hear uh, more details on that, as well as um, taking a look at the fee schedule. Uh, there are a couple of fees that we're looking to bump up. Nothing drastic, um, not in this environment, but more just uh, realigning fees to be consistent with the growth of the, the cost to do business. So uh, spending some time to, to look at that before it's all in front of the board at the end of November to introduce the, um, the ordinance, which will establish the tax rate and the fees. So that's where we're at tonight. Uh, I, again, I do wanna thank the board for uh, giving us uh, your time tonight. I know a lot of this is repeat information for many of you. Uh, hopefully there's been a nugget or two that's new, that's interesting and uh, something we could sink our teeth into as we move forward. Um, We've got, uh, we've got a number of meetings. We will, uh, Mr. Tate and I will finalize the actual budget document, uh, which is gonna include um, a lot of what you're used to seeing. Uh, some new formats, we were able to take advantage of uh, the software that we invested in the, to streamline uh, some back office accounting, uh, back to the days when what Bob, we were sitting around with our adding machines and uh, cranking out uh, long spreadsheets. Uh, those days are gone. The, the system spits it all out for us so that we're going to take advantage of that, get that printed out, um, get it to the board and uh, publish for the community to start digging through. Um, and then that way, uh, it's, uh, it's all out there in public for people to digest before we get into the meteor discussions. Uh, so with that, that's what I had planned on covering tonight. Again, thank you for your time. Uh, we can address questions if you have them now. Um, we're available to you, or we can uh, start planning on how we want to proceed um, with future agendas. Just have one quick request, um, Bill. If you can go back to the one screen um, where you wanted, um, like a GIS, and um, Superintendent Flanagan wanted a um, uh, another sergeant, and you wanted to hire an engineer. Um, if you could just kind of see like the cost first, the cost savings, if we do um, do that approach. And I know that some of them all don't have cost savings and obviously people leave them um, and we're going to have to hire people back, you know, for that attrition. Um, but if you could just kind of give me those numbers, like, hey, uh, we have X, Y, and Z, or last year we had seven projects that we spent half a million dollars on and we could pay somebody X and it would be a savings of say $300,000 or something like that. That would be easy <laughs> for me. I don't know if you can do it, but that's kind of. Well, yeah, we can definitely pull those numbers together. We, we actually, we have them um, in the background. Uh, it won't be 300,000 <laughs> in savings, uh -huh. but uh, it'll, it, there are some savings there. Uh -huh. Thanks. So, uh, so to Sean's point on that is, does the savings also include, you know, does that free up other staff to do other things that we might have been outsourcing as well? So, like, will that be included also? Uh, yeah, any of the cost savings are included in the numbers. Um, I, it's it's more qualitative than quantitative, but uh, when we're talking about engineering, uh, which includes not just the project engineer but the GIS uh, position as well. You know, right now that's that's um, that's Steve Norsini, uh, and Steve's pretty good at splitting himself up into a thousand pieces. Mm -hmm. um, but unfortunately, he needs to be in two thousand pieces most of the time. Uh, so it's not necessarily uh, cost savings in other areas, but it frees Steve's time up to address uh, some things that right now may um, may not rise to the top of his list, which is always a, a big list. So. Um, That's exactly what I was referring to. Um, 
I just had two other questions because I know we'll be getting deeper into all this as we go along. Can you remind me, uh, either you or Bob, what the threshold is on the fund balance policy? Yes. So I, uh, I beat you to it, Bob. I know you got it, but I had it up on my computer screen. So, um, so we, uh, bear with me just a sec, just so I can uh, tee it up. So the fund balance policy requires, it has two different thresholds. The, the base threshold is 15% of expenditures um, at 20, at the expenditures budgeted for 2021 as proposed tonight, that base fund balance policy would be 5.3 million. Um, then the policy uh, dictates that if business privileged taxes represent more than I think 30% of our total revenue, it, it requires another 10% for a total of 25% of expenses. That number would be uh, 8.8 .8 million for 2021. So uh, that that's what I was referring to earlier as being a little bit underwater there, um, but something that is not insurmountable in terms of correcting and, and hopefully coming up with a plan going forward. And as we move forward, just for the benefit of um, those who haven't been through this process before, because we definitely have some, if we could keep that in mind when we talk about, you know, the kind of the fund balance piece and all that, um, so they are aware. Um, I have two, sorry, I lied. I have two other questions. So the one thing I don't see addressed is what we need to do with regards to millage because of the assessment, the reassessment. So I'm going to assume that we'll talk about that moving forward yeah uh the the problem that we're in as we sit here tonight is we just don't have confirmed numbers yet um so i don't you know we have we have an example database or not example they they sent us a database that's now about a month and a half old i'm guessing there's been a number of um hearings and adjustments made to those numbers uh so we don't have anything that's certified uh that we can rely on so i'd hate to run too fast in a direction just to, to find out that the, the information's outdated and we're off. So what we do know is that we're gonna have to, when we adopt the tax rate for 2021, there, we're gonna have to start by resetting the millage to a revenue neutral amount. Um, you know, based on the, just anecdotally, based on the, the, the database they sent us back in either early September or end of August, it was showing a, an assessed value increase of about double. So again, just you know, using straight arithmetic, that our, the revenue neutral millage would be about half of what it is now. Or um, you know, I don't have the millage directly in front of me, and I it That's is okay. a, you know, big in two mills somewhere in that ballpark. I think it's just good to get that out there, like yeah. you know, as we're concerned. I'm sure people, or anyone who might be watching, might be saying, ah. Yeah, um, I don't blame them. I just, I, I really wish we had good numbers to run with. We're, they, we just don't have them yet. Mm -hmm. And then my only other thing is the Act 511 uh, position, which you did mention and you said you're getting ready to hire for, is that included in the budget? So that's included already? Not, yeah. And that's, because I didn't see that in the new things. That's yes. still, okay. That's in the finance department's budget numbers. Um, and uh not just on the expense side, but we're also anticipating it on the, you know, on the rev, seeing some bumps in the revenue side as a result as well. And just one more question. I'm sorry, I'm so annoying. Um, you guys aren't anticipating, so I know that we're down on the uh, the transfer, uh, the transfer fees and the, tr the transfer taxes for the real estate. Um, you guys don't foresee that you know, I was telling somebody about that and, and everyone's like, oh my God, the real estate market's going so crazy now. Is We don't foresee any sort of maybe like crazy influx by the end of the year or something like that. <clears throat> well, I mean, we'll certainly take it. Um, but what uh, what's driving the number? So there's, and Bob, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm going off my memory from looking at this for the last couple of years is that the the residential real estate is usually pretty consistent, uh, consistently hot. Um, it's what really drives that revenue up in the years where it's really good is we get a handful of uh, business turnover. 
where you've got a, a multi-million dollar transfer that really bumps that number up. And that just hasn't been the case this year. Uh, but by and large, the realty transfer number this year is performing better than its other Act 511 counterparts. And okay, now. If, I, if I can add to that, we, we typically get uh, once a month a deposit from the county. Um, just today, I got an email and we did get a significant amount deposited today, more than was expected. Uh, it's not even reflected in the numbers yet because they'll update overnight. Um, but that trend would keep us right on budget, if not even a little better for 2020. Uh, but it was, it was probably the, one of the largest deposits of the year that just hit today. So hopefully that's a good sign for the real estate market as well as our real estate transfer tax. Yes. Great. Thanks, Bob. That's good news. Thank yeah, you. <clears throat> I'm done. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, one other uh, offer to, to throw out there is, um, as we've done in the past, uh, if, if, the, if any of the commissioners want to get together uh, with myself, Bob Tate, or any of the department heads, you know, we're available to you. Uh, this isn't always the best uh, environment to get into the, you know, the, the blood and guts of the budget. But if, um, if you need that knowledge, uh, we're here for you. We're, we're happy to meet with you and, and step through as much detail as you'd like to so that everyone has a good understanding of what these numbers are. Okay, thank you. Um, is there any additional commissioner comment or questions? I would just like to start as one of the new commissioners, new to this process. Um, I had to join late and I apologize, but I will be taking you up on the offer to um, sit and learn more. And I really appreciate the work that everyone put into um, the presentations. And I think we're starting off the process really well. Thank you. There any staff comment? Uh, I had a comment as um, I have talked to the assessor, the head of uh, the assessment department in Delaware County. Um, they've had a huge increase of the appeals since they were free and the formal appeals and of the over 200,000 parcels, they've had about 10%. So they've been going through 2000. Um, we will be getting that data supposedly in November. So that is when we should have some harder numbers. Good. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, Kathy. Is there any additional staff comment? We have, I thought I saw one item of public comment. Um, this is sent from an iPhone and I apologize. I have to read these exactly as they're written in spite of the fact that I know that there are some typos and you guys are all gonna understand what she means as well. Sarah Pilling, 29 Garrett. These are extraordinary times. No one can doubt this. For 2921, I trust that both commissioners and management will instantly and consistently work to separate all programs and projects into needs and wants. These choices and changes will be hard decisions for commissioners, staff, and residents, but should help uh, uh, all of us get through these tough financial times that are the result of COVID-19. Thank you, Sarah. Again, we all know what you mean. You sent it from your iPhone, I get it, but I, I'm just not allowed to interpret for you. Is there, I see no additional public comment. Um, so I'm gonna call the vote for adjournment. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Thank you, we are adjourned. <laughs>